What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Um, today, I got another special episode for you guys. Um, this is more of a topical uh, thing because I was planning on doing another country, but because of the news that's out there right now, don't know if it's true or not, uh, don't know if it's complete or not, I don't know the full context of whether or not Kim Jong-un actually passed away as of the time of this recording, but just in case he did, let's go ahead and do a quick... Uh, Memoriam to North Korea. This is Geography Now does North Korea. Uh, wow. <laughs> that sounds dirty. Uh, this is Geography Now, North Korea version. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into this, see what it has to offer. And let's try not to make any unfunny comments. You wouldn't want... Uh, well, that was unprecedented. I shouldn't have done that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, this is uncharted territory for me. I shouldn't have done that. Let's jump into this and <clears throat> check it out. What's the biggest difference between North and South Korea? Well, for one, I'd say watch their news broadcasts and take note on how they talk about their leaders. As opposed to... Yeah, that and I think they have like this thing going on with conflict and something about a war, but yeah, yeah. Small details. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. We have reached our next set of twin countries. The first was the Congos, the last will be the Sudans. But for now, we have reached the Koreas. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you may have heard something about North Korea in the past decade, as it's been in the news quite a bit. As you know, I'm half Korean. I always thought the South Korean flag looked like the world was turned into a yin-yang symbol and then you got four satellites just floating around it. That's, I always see it every time I look at it. I have heard something about <laughs> North Korea in the past decade, as it's been in the news quite a bit. As you know, I'm half Korean with roots in South Korea, and not only that, but I'm also American. So basically, I'm the worst possible candidate in the eyes of a North Korean to speak about their country. I will try Probably. to remain as unbiased and neutral in my delivery, addressing as much information as objectively Your as possible. Your Western bias of out of this. Kureso, chumbi desu nika. Kurum, sijak. Dude, I really need to work on my Korea, and I'm an embarrassment. Anyway, <laughs> North Korea is sometimes referred to as the Hermit Kingdom, so there's always like a sense of mystery when it comes to what's inside. Fortunately, we have satellites and Google Even Earth. The city First of looks all, deserted. North Korea is located on the Korean Peninsula, connected to China's Liaoning and Jilin provinces, sandwiched between the Korea Bay and this and sea, which be careful what Don't you call it. Russia. Koreans and Chinese prefer the name East Sea, whereas the Japanese call it the Sea of Japan. Keep in mind, there's also an incredibly short 17 kilometer long border with Russia at the tri point there with China. Along the border with Russia lies the friendship bridge and only North Koreans and Russians are allowed to take it. With a transfer in Vladivostok, this means you could essentially go all the way to Moscow, making it one of the longest train itineraries in the world at around nine days upon arrival. The same deal exists with China in which there are three main border crossings, the Sino-Korean Friendship Bridge, the Jian Yalu River Railway, and the New Yalu River Bridge. Each of these bridges though are guarded and only let in certain government approved arrivals that have no set schedule. The country is divided into three types of administrative divisions, the nine provinces, the Tukbyoshi or special city of Ranson, as well as the capital Pyongyang, which also acts in its own entity. Pyongyang has the only international airport, Pyongyang Sunan International Airport, whereas the second largest city, Hamhung, and the third largest, Chongjin, both on the east coast, also have respectively the next largest domestic airports. Can we take a break real quick and just, just, just address this? If your country has pictures of its leader plastered all over the damn place and are praising them like they're some type of messiah... You're already starting off with a bad on a bad foot. If you aren't allowed to talk shit about your leader, then God damn it, that that's not true freedom. You should be able to just gal on the street and say this person can eat it. <laughs> okay, let's not go that far, but you know what I'm saying. If, if if it's at a point where the leader is worshipped, I would already start to get some culty vibes from from the country. Nothing against Koreans, by the way, as an American. I want anybody that, if you happen to be in North Korea and happen to come across this video, to know Americans have no problem with the actual people of North Korea. It's the the government that Americans have an issue with. Just like we have an issue with our own government. <laughs> like, it's almost, almost, almost the same. 
Now we reach the most controversial part, the border with South Korea, literally like their own brothers. This 250 kilometer long border, known as the DMZ or Demilitarized Zone, also sometimes called the 38th Parallel, this line was established by the Korean Armistice Agreement to serve as a buffer zone between the two nations, giving more than a little half of the peninsula to North Korea. This means that essentially both countries claim that they are the rightful owners of the entire peninsula, or at least their government ruling systems should be the dominant ruling ideologies. At Panmunjom lies the Joint Security Area, which acts as like the only connection between North in South Korea with neutral conference rooms. It's actually kind of like a tourist spot in which people are allowed to go in under the supervision of a military guard. On top of that, it's estimated that the country has about 8,000 to 15,000 hidden underground facilities, including underground factories, underground air force hangars that cut through mountains, naval ports, and artillery pieces in caves. North Korea, as we will soon find out, has quite a unique layout based heavily off of politics. Here you will find symbolism and imagery that relates to the government everywhere, even in the middle of remote farm villages. Every school and office building is required to have portraits of the late Kim Jong-il and yeah, you see. Song on their walls. In Pyongyang, when they're not driving, they usually take the amazingly embellished underground metro system, which goes as far as 110 meters below the surface. Most foreigners that visit rarely get to see anything outside of Pyongyang. If you score a deal with the government, you might be allowed to visit Chongjin or the beaches of Wonsan or the industrial city of Hamhung. Oh, and keep in mind, since 2015, they've actually started using their own time zone, UTC plus 830, which makes them 30 minutes behind South Korea and Japan. Why did they do that? Uh, because North Korea. That's why. Otherwise, I thought I heard, well, this might be an older video, of course, but I believe that they have actually, or at one point they changed it so that it matched South, South Korea's time when they were having their whole peace talks, but I think they might have gone back to their original um, exclusive time zone. Somebody have to correct me on that, but I believe that's the case. South Korea and Japan. Why did they do that? Uh, because North Korea. That's why. Otherwise, this is the part where I usually mention places of interest, and honestly, out of my research, almost all of them were located in Pyongyang, such as the Korean People's Study House, the Ark of Triumph, Juche Tower, Cholima Statue, the Victoria's Fatherland War Museum, Manyongde Funfair Amusement Park, Kumsusan Memorial Palace, Gyeonggijang Stadium, the largest in the world, the tallest building, Lugyong Hotel, the Ideals of North Korean Workers Party Monument, Otherwise, outside of Pyongyang and Myohyangsan, you have the Friendship Exhibition Hall. In general, North Korea is quite different from most places you'll encounter due to the regime honoring architecture and monuments. Aside from all that, though, the actual landscape has a few colorful sights to offer, which brings us to... Now, believe it or not, if you ever get the chance to see the landscape of rural North Korea, it will not disappoint you. First of all, North Korea is about 80% mountainous, with the largest ranges in the northeast being the Hamgyong and Namnim mountain chains. Now, when the two Koreas split up, the north side got the most treasured natural landmark, the highest peak on the entire Korean peninsula, Mount Pekdu. Well, part of it, China kind of got three quarters of it. Mount Pekdu, with its caldera lake, known as Heaven Lake, is actually an active volcano with the last eruption happening in 1903, and it's considered a sacred spot to all Koreans. To the west of Pekdu is the longest river that divides the border with China, the Amnok or Yalu River, which empties into the Bay of Korea. Nonetheless, the Taedong River is probably the most important one as it flows directly through Pyongyang. About 70% of the country is forested, about 20% is arable for farming, which employs about a quarter of the entire population. Virtually every single crop field is under government jurisdiction as farmers must hand over a portion or quota to the state. During the 90s, widespread flooding disasters caused famine, which killed off hundreds of thousands of people. And since then, North Korea has actually decided to quadruple their potato production in many places, replacing rice since potatoes grow much faster and easier. Speaking of which, I would argue that if you really want a taste of deep, true not- At this point, potatoes are almost like the sponsorship for communism. <laughs> it's almost like an official uh, state sponsorship. Your country sponsored by potatoes. Potatoes grow much faster and easier. Speaking of which, I would argue that if you really want a taste of deep, true, non-commercialized better Korean already make cuisine, it. then the North potatoes. Koreans probably have a little bit more locked down better than South Korea. I'm sorry, South Korea, but it's kind of true. I mean, come on. Since when the hell was cheese ramyun a thing? And even though, admittedly, they do taste kind of... Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, I already have a problem with sliced cheese to begin with. Well, not necessarily sliced cheese, but more so craft sliced cheese. But, uh... Uh, now I know Asian like Asian countries don't really do like cheese and this is why this, oh my god <laughs> 
<laughs> good. Kimchi was never originally intended to be made into a burger patty. Anyway, a traditional Korean meal kimchi will usually consist good. of multiple oh, banchan, which are small point. seasoned side dishes placed in small dishes and bowls alongside your main plate. Typical dishes I'm sure many of you have already heard of, like bulgogi, kalbi, samgyeopsal, buchinge, bibimbap, are made in good, restaurants, though. sometimes in the homes of the elite. However, most people in North Korea don't actually eat meat that much, Damn. except on public holidays or on special occasions due to the lack of access. North Koreans are also known for having the best version of my favorite food in the world, nengmyeon, ice cold starchy buckwheat noodles typically served with a half boiled egg, thin slices of brisket, cucumber radishes topped off with the right amount of vinegar and Korean spicy mustard. If I could go to North Korea just to try their nengmyeon, I would. Watch, I'm at customs at the airport and they're like, the purpose of visit? Nengmyeon. Yeah, it's probably not gonna happen. Yo, Dennis Rodman, I need you to do me a favor. <laughs> Almost all oil and petroleum is imported from China from a pipeline originating in Dadong along the border. And I think that's a good transition to start discussing the people and how and why they are the way they are. Oh, Kurom, Mareba. And that will be discussed too. Now, let's be honest, when you hear North Korea, immediately images of the Kim regime and marching soldiers, military personnel, but for a couple minutes, try as kind hard of, as yeah. you can to put that aside and go deeper to a level that most people in the Western world don't really tap into. What is North Korea like outside of the news? Well, first of all, the country has about 25 million people and has the most active troops per population at nearly 48 per thousand people. With the exception of a very small group of Chinese, Japanese, wow. and Westerners that have residency status, the country is almost completely homogenous at 99.99% ethnically Korean. That was the easiest pie chart I've ever made. In addition, they also use North Korean one as their currency, even though foreigners can't use it. They use a Type C plug outlet and they drive on the right side of the road. Let's quickly talk about the few non North Koreans that are allowed to live in North Korea. The only real group of ethnic minorities that have inhabited the peninsula prior to war times would be the Chegasun people, descendants of Manchurian lay monks from China that got married and settled in the area. Otherwise, modern Chinese people known as Hua Chao have been able to establish residencies in North Korea. However, since the 80s, more have repatriated back to China. Otherwise, a very small community community of only a couple hundred Indians, Japanese, and yes, even about 200 Americans live in North Korea. Some of them are prisoners of war, some are defectors, but most of these people are serving in humanitarian sectors, providing things like medical and educational aid. The country has virtually no standardized immigration policy other than, will the president allow you in? Which is how these two people got in. Remember the Equatorial Guinea episode? We talked about the dictator Francisco Macias? Well, he made a deal with Kim Il-sung and sent his kids to North Korea shortly before he was assassinated. Yeah, his daughter Monique was raised alongside the regime, personally meeting Kim multiple times. She speaks fluent Korean and is alive today. She wrote a book and does speaking tours. Then you have this guy who goes by his Korean name, Cho Sun Il. He's the only Westerner to officially work for the regime. It took him over 10 years to gain the confidence of the government. He is head of the Korean Friendship Association and is North Korea's unofficial ambassador to the world. What's even more interesting are the North wow. Koreans living abroad. Today, there's a community of North Korean descended people in Japan known as the Zainichi Koreans. They have their own pro Pyongyang operating Cameraman. schools and teach lessons Get in back Korean on the people. with a strong pro North Korean curriculum in Japan. Weird, huh? Also, there's estimated to be a little more than 20,000 defectors living in South Korea. And there are quite a few living in the US as well. Remember that letter I got on Flag Friday? In North Korea, they speak, of course, Korean, but a distinct North Korean dialect, which is actually more kind of like a proper traditional way of speaking. Whereas the Korean spoken in South Korea utilizes a plethora of loan words from English and to some extent Chinese. For example, in South Korea, juice is juice. In North Korea, Kwaldanmul, which translates to something like fruit sweet water. In South Korea, ice cream. In North Korea, orom kwaja, which means something like ice sweet tree. It's kind of like how Icelandic and Faroese are closer to ancient Norse than Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian. Now, being a North Korean in North Korea is very different from being a citizen of most other places on Earth. First thing you have to know is juche. This word describes the ideology of North Korea started by its founder, Kim Il-sung. Juche translates to something along the lines of self-reliance. What's interesting is that North Korea even goes by the juche year, not the Gregorian calendar. Calendar. All the years start on Kim Il-sung's birthday, April 15th, 1912, making 2018 the year 106 for them. All resources follow the Sungun Chongji policy, which gives ration priority to the military. They have the largest military budget per GDP in the world at nearly 23%. Both men and women are required to serve conscription, and with 1.2 million active, this makes North Korea the country with the fourth largest military after China, the US, and India. In elementary school, children are taught almost immediately that the enemy is the West, and specifically the USA. One Damn. of their favorite cartoons being Squirrel and hedgehog, anthropomorphic depictions of North Koreans versus the Japanese weasels, South the Korean mice, and the American wolves. And don't forget good old Russia bear that the squirrels used to depend on for help as an ally, but he got too drunk and so they dropped him. Now I'm pretty sure you're all aware of how much restriction there is in North Korea on everyday commodities that we in the West are accustomed to, like YouTube. A list of things restricted in North Korea include overly provocative clothing, any website outside <laughs> of North Korea's Kwangmyung internet service, movies and music from the outside, Coca-Cola, anything VPNs related to or really being LGBT, there, international travel, unless you are a high-ranked official with permission from the government. The 
domestic travel between cities unless you have a permit. Magazines, hair dye, or a haircut that it does is. not fit one of the 28 Hello. approved styles for men and women. Any kind of religious literature. They did just legalize certain cell phones, though. Progress! Speaking of which, North Korea is essentially an enforced atheistic state, although some would argue that it's more like a person reverence state. Although the constitution says it allows religious freedom, religion is heavily restricted and chastised. Anyone owning a piece of religious literature, proselytizing, or worshipping anywhere outside of the government sanctioned and heavily monitored churches will be punished severely. Numbers are hard to come by since the Christian community is heavily concealed and underground, but studies show that there could be anywhere between 300,000 to half a million Christians residing in North Korea to this day. North Korea is a very elitist run country. The top and most Privileged people live in Pyongyang. Most people that live in the city are expected to excel in all fields of academia and the arts. Most people there play at least one instrument and have some kind of skill that can attribute to the furtherance of North Korea's cultural identity. And if the government feels like it, they will hold the Arirang Mass Games, the largest of its kind according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Here students as young as five from one of the top eight elite schools of Pyongyang participate in an extravagant colorful performance of exquisitely choreographed acrobatics, arts, dance, and music with an amazing card mosaic wall literally controlled by individual students flipping yeah, colored panels, Pepsi's creating a massive that. moving image. It's like a living TV and each pixel is a person. Okay, history time. If we really want to go back and discuss the entire history of the Korean Peninsula, it kind of goes like this. Jelmun and Mumun pottery period, Korean Neolithic period, Korean Bronze Age, Korean Iron Age, First Kingdom of Gojoseon was founded along with the Jin State, the Proto Three Kingdoms period, the actual Three Kingdoms period of Goguryeo, Baekje and Shila, Shila and Balhe split up, the latter Three Kingdoms, United Dynastic period of Goryeo, Those Joseon and Korean Korea Empire, World War II, Japan, Japanese occupation, there's a weird provisional government thing hosted in China, and then this is where things get complicated. Basically, Russia and China supported the North and the US and the UN with its allies for the South. The Korean War, or as the North Koreans call it, the Victorious Fatherland Liberation War, was essentially a war caused by political ideology. Basically, there are arguments on who exactly shot the first fire, but what we do know is that on Sunday, June 25th, 1950, North Korea's Korean People's Army crossed the 38th parallel behind artillery fire, and in three months pushed South Korean and American forces all the way down to Pusan. Then the US and UN forces retaliated, they pushed the North Koreans all the way back up with a vicious counterattack. Finally, there's a stalemate and armistice in 1954, and the DMZ was set up officially separating the two Koreas. Today, North Korea is in an interesting situation. If you talk to a North Korean, they will tell you, yes, anyone disrespecting leaders will be punished. Which brings us to Kim Jong-un. I feel like we kind of have to do a flowchart like we did in the Columbia episode. Can we do that, Ken? Sure. It all started with this guy, Kim Il-sung, father of North Korea. Kim Il-sung had six children from two wives. His oldest son, Kim Jong-il, took over after him when he passed away in 1994. The country wept. Kim Jong-il was known for being the man that essentially, against UN policies, made North Korea a nuclear we'll state by supposedly Jong. developing <laughs> nuclear warheads. He died in 2011. The country wept again. He had six children from three different women. The oldest son was supposed to inherit the nation, but apparently Kim Jong-nam was considered an embarrassment and he lived in exile. The next oldest son, Kim Jong-chul, was deemed as not fit for the job. So that left the youngest son, Kim Jong-un, to take over the throne. Kim Jong-un was brought to power after his father's death. And in 2013, Kim Jong-un executed his aunt's husband under grounds of alleged corruption and treason. His half-brother Kim Jong-nam was assassinated in Kuala Lumpur. Details are still a little shady behind it. He then continued his father's work by doing a series of missile tests on Mount Mantop. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on in North Korean politics and it only gets more interesting when we talk about their relationship to the outside world. Let's cover that now. North Korea- well, Actually, before going, you continue, you let me stop. I believe that Kim Yo-jong is the one that people are assuming might take power after if the news of Kim Jong-un dying was true. And le before that even happens, let's go ahead and get some stuff out of the way. Now, you guys know that I'm a liberal, so let me go ahead and talk to my liberal, um, co uh, I was about to say cohorts, but that sounds like something bad. <laughs> Compatriots, whatever. Now, if a woman does take control of North Korea, can we stop and take a minute and not flip the hell out as if this is some type of groundbreaking achievement? So let, before we get started, let's go ahead and, and ban a few words that could be considered or could be seen as insensitive. OK, let's not refer to her taking over as the bomb. Don't use the word slay in any way. Um, yeah. And try to refrain from any other type of things that might talk about. You know, killing as some type of positive thing. <laughs> she she doesn't slay shit, or at least let's hope she doesn't slay shit. <laughs> so don't refer to her as slaying or anything like that. No bomb references. No no nothing. Just just let that go. I know I know how Twitter and uh, I know how like left Twitter can be. 
Uh, let's let that slide. Let's, let's ignore this one. This isn't this isn't one to try to take a W on. Let, let's forget about it. All right, continuing. Continued his father's work by doing a series of missile tests on Mount Montop. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on in North Korean politics, and it only gets more interesting when we talk about their relationship to the outside world. Let's cover that now. North Korea is known for being one of the most isolated nations on Earth. However, they do actually have diplomatic missions with outside states. First of all, North Korea has made kind of interesting business ties with various African nations. They are known for being the creators of various statues like the ones in Zimbabwe, Namibia, Mozambique, even like Senegal's China. resistant monument, the largest statue in Africa. Generally, they seem to have ties with nations that also have ties to communism or are still under communist governments. In the past, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam were pretty close allies. However, in the past, these states have adopted a more capitalistic substructure in their yep. Legislations, which has distanced them from North Korea over the years. You would think that the USA and UK would have bad ties, but surprisingly, the UK has an embassy in North Korea. North Korea actually does have third party agreements under the table that allows private investors to do business with them. Whenever North Korea says they're closing off to the Americans, there's always kind of like a small loophole that they kind of let slide. And by that, I mean Dennis Rodman. North mm. Korea might say that their best friends would kind of Money. technically be China and Russia. Money is the one thing that can make the world actually turn into world peace. I mean, it would be hell for the people on the bottom, of course, but as far as nations not going to war, it's probably all tied to money. Hell, the reason we haven't had a World War III yet is probably because of corporations and money. And that's not me trying to glorify corporations or anything like that. Like I said, the people on the bottom get crushed in it, but most people aren't going to go to war because it'll hurt their business interests. I mean Dennis Rodman. North Korea might say that their best friends would kind of technically be China and Russia. However, China and Russia are a little weary of hanging out with them. Both countries are their largest suppliers of import and export, as well as outside communication, even though that is very restricted as well. When it comes to South Korea, though, the North has kind of like a strange I love you, but I hate everything you stand for type of relationship. These two are basically identical twins, separated at birth, raised by incredibly different foster parents. North Koreans kind of view South Koreans as American puppets that condone Western imperialist ideologies. Basically, the narrative for the North Koreans is withdraw your ties and sanctions to the Americans and we can reunify, whereas the South is like, get rid of Kim Jong-un and join our system and then we can unify. In conclusion, yes, North Korea has quite a reputation around the world for being a mysterious, isolated nation of enigma brimming with controversy and conflict, but they also have a unique story that tells us how ideology can play one of, if not one of the most important roles on how we people will live on the planet. I don't know what the future will hold for North Korea and South Korea, but let's hope that somehow, some way, peace can be the final result. Stay tuned, twin number two, South Korea is coming up next and my mom will be in it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll probably be checking that out next just to tie that episode with this episode, but then after that I'm going to go right back to my original plans, which was to do a reaction to Macedonia and then moving on to Africa. Now, and by the way, I'll, I'll jump into Asia and South America and stuff after that as well. It's just, that was the plan already. Um, yeah, see the only thing holding North Korea back in the eyes of the West is the Kim regime. Like I said, there's not a problem with the people themselves because not everybody is like 100% for something. I mean, no country has that much loyalty, which is why if you see a, a step two for spotting or step two for identifying whether or not your country is starting to become a dictatorship. The first one was obviously worshiping the leader. If you see a lot of pictures and glorifying of the leader, then that's red flag number one. Red flag number two. If they win their election by anything more than 95%, <laughs> then chances are you're in a dictatorship. The percentage could even be lower than that. Let's say 90%. If they win the uh, the, the election by 90%, that's, a, that's for flag number two. The other ones is about them dressing eccentrically and them focusing really heavily on military. But those two first ones are usually the ones that get you early on. Um, if it, yeah, if they, if the Kim regime were to just drop out and somebody were to come through and be more open to, you know, be more open to unifying with South Korea, all it needs is a crack because it, the, the thing that overturns dictatorships isn't necessarily the dictator going, you know what? I think I'm gonna step down. It's the people. And the second you give the people a taste of, you know, freedom in some way, the floodgates start busted open. It's like a it's like a dam. Once the cracks start to come in, that's it. So 
if there's somebody that takes control of North Korea that is just willing to allow a little bit of change, that's all it takes. The second they get a, 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 a idea of what the world is like outside of their bubble, that's when everything uh, changes. I mean, there is not a coincidence that dictators usually always go for the intellectuals and the media and uh, freedom of expression and things like that first. By the way, that's step three if you aren't keeping up. Or not step three. The outfit. Uh, military. Step five. Well, actually, that step is probably a lot sooner than that. But it's one of the steps. So it's, this step list is not in order. <laughs> they they take out the free media, the intellectuals, the scholars, the arts. Um, you know, things like that. Usually that's... Uh, sign that you're becoming a dictatorship and the reason they do that is because if people have any idea of what the world actually is like then they wouldn't be okay with falling in line with that stuff usually you need some type of scapegoat or something to get people unified so they can get behind a certain cause and if they feel like that cause is a big enough threat people in desperate situations will find themselves doing things they would not ever dream themselves doing. And that is what I believe what North Korea kind of is going through, or not just North Korea, but any country that has dictators, that's what they are going through. Like they feel like they're in a desperate situation that requires drastic measures. So they accept certain things that they're not willing to accept on a normal basis. And all the dictator has to do is hide the fact that, either the threat isn't real or the threat is not relevant anymore. Like once you hide that and make people think that the threat is still there and it's still a danger to everybody, then they'll continue to do whatever it is they do. Now, once they start questioning, that's when the iron fist policy start to come through where as soon as somebody says anything, you just arrest them and kill them or you discredit them, make them seem like, or make them into the enemy, make everybody believe that they're, sympathizing with whatever else and then you know you can keep the facade going for so long but like i said once you have that leader that is willing to offer change and that change starts to seep through the 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 pores uh, that's that's nasty (laughs) seep through the cracks of the iron wall that you had up then people start to realize that or people start to go further and further and start to realize that everything that they thought was a danger was actually bullshit and then that's when change sweeps through the country so this situation with kim jong-un could be something that changes north korea for the better um i don't know anything about the the his sister that people are assuming might take control i don't know if she's better or worse than kim jong-un <laughs> um i mean at the risk of people taking my message and trying to turn me into like they're trying to use me like a Bernie Sanders example where they took the Cuba thing and took it way out of context and started talking shit about it. I'm going to say something that if you listen the wrong way could be seen as negative, which I don't give a fuck. I'm not Bernie Sanders. I'll I'll call you on your bullshit. But um, Kim Jong-un was a lot better than Kim Jong-il was. He did do certain things that, you know, kind of like lukewarm I melted the ice a little bit by offering talks with South Korea. And, um, I mean, Trump and him managed to get into peace talks, even though I'm pretty sure he used that as an ulterior motive. And for all I know, the fucking talks with South Korea was done using ulterior motives. It's still a step. Every long journey begins with one step. So, you know, it, it's a bit of progress. But like I said, we do need somebody to come through that's willing to take a larger step than that. And the sister could be the one. Then again, we don't even know. Like, I don't even know how the culture in the country works. Like, would they be willing to accept a female leader and uh, listen to her as as well as they listen to... Um, Kim Jong-un 
would this cause some type of rift that could lead to like a civil war or some type of uh, power vacuum situation where you got the sister trying to compete against the, the generals or whatever else. Don't know, but it is an interesting thought. Uh, anyway, that's all I have to say. I'm Devon Da Vinci. Hopefully you've just been a little more enlightened. If there's anybody from Korea that is watching this, uh, please let people know exactly like what the situation is because nobody knows how something is more than the people that actually have lived it or experienced it in some way. So if you are watching this video, people in South Korea or people from North Korea that live in South Korea <laughs> or if somebody in South Korea is being a naughty little person and checking out this video <laughs> themselves while they're in the country, go to the comment section and let people know uh, what you thought. Uh, hell, you can even type in Korean. Google has a translator. I'll translate it <laughs> and try to get a context of what you're trying to say. Now, with that being said, I'm going to wrap this up. I will... Oh, I thought Alexa or somebody was talking. Uh, I, I said the name that shall not be said. <laughs> they almost responded. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. I'm going to give you the deuces, and I'm signing out. Deuces.